Okay, so I will do the introduction. So Miss um, Anshal Sharma will join later, I think. Uh, hello everybody and welcome to our webinar about study in USA by Montana State University Bilings. I'm Lucie Renamberger. I'm an international marketing and communication assistant at Janine Campus France. This webinar is delivered by Miss Anshal Sharma, who will come soon, and man uh, she is manager in India, subcontinent, and Africa, and Mr. Aaron Shah, regional recruitment manager. Montana State University building delivers a transformative education. Know more about the programs offered at the university in the session today. You can solve all your queries and ask questions at the end of the session. And now I pass it over Mr. Aaron Shah. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, hope you're doing safe. And uh, yeah, so to start with, uh, we are a public university and uh, we were established in 1927. So but we will be shortly completing 100 years of our foundation. And uh, yeah, so I'm pretty much excited to uh, deliver this webinar to you guys. And uh, yeah, so hope I'm audible enough. The voice is clear. Am I? Yes, yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. So yeah, let's start with the location first. Let's get to know. Uh, but before that, yes, a pretty much highlighted thing, which is uh, the prerequisites. Now for entrance tests, uh, first thing for undergrads, uh, we do not require any SAT or ACT uh, examinations. Uh, neither for masters, you need to apply for GMAT or GRE. So uh, that's one. Secondly, we accept the Duolingo English test, except uh, from uh, ILTS, uh, or maybe it is PTE or uh, you know other tests. So uh, that's overall introduction about uh, the Montana State University. Let's get to know the Montana State first of all. It is located in the northern eastern part or northern western part of the United States. And uh, it is the fourth largest state in the US. And um, yeah, so uh, speaking about the overall location, how it is, yes, it is blessed with the stunning natural beauty. And it is uh, it has two national parks uh, within the state. And uh, yeah, if you talk about the proximity, um, it is nearby to Washington, Oregon, or California. You can say Seattle is also closely about 1,000 kilometers. So that's eight hours of drive. Um, yeah. Um, Another, I would like to highlight one point that is it borders the two of the states which are only landlocked of Canada. Those provinces are Saskatchewan and Alberta. Those both are bordered at Montana State. So uh, that's one of the thing. And yes, uh, how it becomes a favorable city apart from, uh, you know, uh, downtowns and uh, urban areas like, uh, let's say, California or uh, San Francisco or something like that. So uh, number one, yeah, the pollution and the population is very low, which means there are high chances of employment. Secondly, the life uh, and living standards are better. The people are so satisfied with their own work and whatever the achievements they have that the crime rate is so low and there is exceptional traffic in the area because it has got a huge land and a minimal of population. It is one of the safest and the most affordable states in the US. So that's overall about the Montana state. And now let's get to the city of Billings. Billings is the third largest uh, city in, in you know, uh, Montana. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's uh, with 2% of unemployment rate. And uh, uh, yeah, as I told, thousand kilometers from uh, Seattle. Uh, it has got a safe and welcoming community within. And uh, yeah, so Billings as a city has been evolving as a 
trade hub it has been evolving as a business uh, spot just because it's a tax free zone there are no sales tax so the businesses have been grooming and grooming since uh, here this so uh, that's one of the reason which makes the cost of living very low there are certain mentions in the magazines some of the uh, top rated magazines forbes fortune and uh, outside even uh, they have mentioned the name of billings as a city to live in and uh, here yeah, of course montana as a state how it has brought uh, development and what how is the life of uh, the population out there so these are some of the statistics coming down to the university uh, we have got world class teaching that's because 98% of the faculties have the best of the degrees in their own particular vertical uh, the high level of student satisfaction that's because of the lesser ratio of student to teacher there are almost one teacher per eight student so that's how we uh, prefer to study since it has got 110 acres of land in downtown billings it's located in a very urban area so people can uh, students can you know walk out of the university building and uh, go out in the streets uh, shopping do whatever they want it's it's in a city area so it is not like it's located on a hilly area or somewhere in the down the jungle so uh, that makes uh, that makes very comfortable for people to settle down even after the studies and uh, go for opts and cpts the thing is uh, yeah next uh, point i'd like to highlight is uh, the accreditation standard uh, we have been accredited by ncaa division 2 uh, so that's uh, how we can say that the degrees are well established and are recognized worldly employment opportunities are ample um yeah speaking about the highlights you can highlight as a usp that the education is made affordable since it is a public university and funded by the government uh, the fees are already low and above all we also give scholarships so that's a broad eye view about the university and coming down to the colleges the campuses and the major courses speaking about the commerce line uh, we have college of business hosting the courses majorly in accounting finance management marketing etc so uh, that's about the accounts and statistics people uh, coming down to the associate degree so there are three courses we run uh, first is associate degree second is bachelors that's a four year program and the masters degree that's for two years so under these programs we have got uh, associate degrees for general studies business administration it related information technology computer network software and hardware uh, things it includes uh, specific stream lines like cyber security uh, it has got uh, networking and etc etc coming down to uh, the college of health and professionals uh yeah we have got into uh, health affairs you, you can uh, pursue a student can pursue the bachelor of science or uh, even masters in health stream coming down to the stem education uh, yes we have got ba and bs in the streams like psychology environmental studies chemistry biology physics mathematics and communication and etc so these are the major courses which we have in our uh, institutions uh, there are six particular colleges uh, which makes the university we, there are various campuses and uh, yeah so coming down straight to the requirements uh, how about the undergraduates so firstly they need to have cleared uh, at least 12th standard and the fees would be application fees are applicable for the agents uh, so for you uh, uh, it would be 35 dollars for a single application 
um, and it, it will have 2.5 GPA that makes in percentage 55. Uh, the passport is required ILTS 5.5. There is no specific mention about uh, any, uh, you know, le nothing less than kind of thing. So it should be 5.5 even if he or she has uh, one band as five. That's okay for us. We will accept. And yes, previous academic records must be there. So this makes an application perfect for proceeding. We give away uh, acceptance letter within two to three days. And uh, post that, we require financials and uh, the bank statements. This will enable us to give you I-20 for the student. And then he, can, he or she can proceed for the undergraduate degree. For the graduation, that's uh, sorry, post graduation, um, the application fees remain $45. The minimum is 60%. Uh, the IELTS requirement would be 6.5. Uh, apart from that, yes, we require two references from the academics or uh, employment. The resume for the programs like MBR sort of things. Uh, admission uh, would be taking about one month since. It has got some additional documents under uh, rather than uh, unlike undergraduate courses. Uh, apart from that, yes, financials and bank statement remain the same for I-20 and you can receive it within one week of time. So that's about the major requirements we have. Uh, yeah, Joseph, please. How can I help you? Uh, maybe they will ask the question at the end of the session in the chat box. It will be easier, I think. Sure, thanks. So uh, you can note down the question if you have, um, and then we can proceed ahead further with the question answer round. We'll be having it at last. And uh, if required, I'll have it. The consequence slides uh, if uh, you want it for reference. That's fine with me. Yeah, shall we proceed? Yes, yes, you can. Thank you. So that's all about Montana State of University. Coming down to the scholarships, uh, yes. Uh, before scholarships, the tuition charges for one year. For associate degree, uh, it's $9,000 for bachelor's, it is $19,550. For master's, it is $17,450. These are all USDs, so please do not uh, make any, uh, you know, kind of uh, miscommunication. Yeah, so exploring all the scholarships. This is the major portion which will make you enable to convince the student rather than not going for any of the other country or other colleges or other universities. The courses are really affordable. Uh, these are the scholarship options you can give on the basis of merit. And it starts from 55 percentage. As the student gets eligible for the admission, he gets even eligible for the award of 500 of scholarship. So their fees automatically becomes a minimum of 8,510 for associate degree and it ranges till 85% if a student has got, they will be able to study uh, at $6,510. So that makes the scholarship awarded till 2,500. Coming down to bachelors, the same GPAs from 55% degree, uh, 55 to 85%, um, you can uh, have the student awarded the scholarship for about $10,000. So that makes the tuition fees as least as 9,550. Now, uh, a question may be arised that for associates and bachelors, these are the scholarships, what about the masters? Coming down to the question, this is the thing which we have. So over and above, the scholarships which are received merit-based, we also have 
60 plus specific clubs working for individual uh, co-curricular activities and uh, posting under uh, the center of engagement of MSUB. So what happens is uh, if a person becomes a member of this club and performs well, they would be awarded a scholarship too. So over and above all the scholarships which are received as per the merit, they will also be eligible to get multicultural club scholarships and the same goes for masters. So masters won't be getting it on the basis of merit, but they are always eligible for multicultural club membership and even the scholarships. Same goes for Billings friendship families. They also give a specific scholarships on the basis of the percentage or the scores you get while pursuing your studies out there. So these two are the over and above cherry on the cake. You can say the scholarships available while in the campus. If you uh, study out there, perform well, you will be getting the scholarships on the basis of your performance. Apart from that, yes, we have an on-campus uh, facility to reside and we have single double chairing dormitory or we have even huge domes uh, to reside. You can choose any one of them and can stay back there. And we have cafes, we have gyms, we have playing area, we have libraries, all in the single building itself, which makes student facilitated enough to get employment opportunities. That's number one and ease of access to everything at single place. So that saves time, uh, even creates opportunities for them to work part-time within the campus itself. So they don't have to search out for jobs outside the campus. Oh uh, yeah, speaking about the jobs, we have got uh, placement assistance. Uh, they'll be having job fairs uh, once they complete, well, you know, have the studies and they're about to get completed the studies, they'll be having job fairs out there. So, uh, yeah, one thing to be shared to students, probably you can say that uh, you can have two years of associate degree, work for one year as an OPT, complete the bachelor's degree uh, for two years, work again, and that's a six years long plan in the US. So with this, I... Uh, I hereby complete my presentation and uh, now the question answer round is open. You can come up with the questions, whatever you have. So there is a question in the chat, the question but it's application turn around time of one month is on the high side, knowing that students might not have such patient. Okay, so uh, in order to answer this question, it is the highest time we take. So that's a turnaround time, which is uh, taken at max for masters. Because uh, see, uh, practically if we see, there might be changes coming in the documents, coming in, uh, you know, uh, the uh, additional uh, things, the verification may take time. Uh, even the references at times may be, uh, you know, uh, double checked. And that is why uh, it may take time. So this is the maximum time it will take. I hope this answers your question, Joseph. Yes, you did. Thank you. Okay, so we have one more probably questions.
uh, please kindly share screen to see the programs um, offered. I like to have slides of pre recorded video on. So I would like, like to ask again. Yeah, please. Yes, is there no way um, the uh, proof of English does the IELT as you mentioned can be waived? Uh, pardon, could you repeat again, please? Sorry. Um, I mean, during your presentation, I saw IELTS of 5.5. Is there no way it can be waived when you have um, studied in English? So uh, it, it's not required to have studied in English. We also have pathway programs for uh, English language. That's an intensive English language program, IELP. That's what we call. And under that, you, a student can uh, pursue the degree without even IELTS. So uh, that's, that's one of the things which uh, we have started since last uh, two and a half years, probably. So under that, what happens is, um, if a student doesn't want to appear in ILTS, uh, in that case, we do give away a waiver of ILTS and accept, but that's, uh, you know, under one program, that's IELP. So a student will receive I-20 saying that, uh, for example, if a student is going for a uh, so bachelor's of science in psychology, uh, what he'll get as an I-20 is, it will be returned as a bachelor's degree with ILP, uh, IELP. So uh, yeah, under that, one has to go through uh, a course of a month or two, and then he, can, he or she can uh, start the studies. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Yes, we can hear you now, but I think you, your microphone was off. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, so Achil is wanting to join the meeting and uh, she actually called me up. And uh, so I, I believe she has not received the confirmation mail probably from the panelists. So if you can facilitate with the same, it will be better. Deepa? Yes, I think someone will make it on the appendix. Sure, thanks. So we don't have any question answers. <laughs> There is two questions in the chat box. Um, right. What is the initial deposit to be paid for getting E20? 
Yeah, if we can just wait for a second, I'm just letting Anchal in. She is. I'm so sorry. Uh, All right, so let's start with the questions. Uh, we are having a couple of questions in the chat box. Uh, student will get the I-20 without ILTS, but will ILTS require at the time of visa? No, actually visa doesn't have to do anything with ILTS. They require your uh, notion to study. So the student will be eligible to travel uh, with a student visa to the US and uh, that has nothing to do with the ILTS. It's fine and we have got visas even with, uh, without ILTS. So that's not required for visa. I hope uh, it answers the question from Mansi. Uh, hello everyone. Hello, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much and I'm so sorry that I joined a little bit late. Actually, I was in another meeting, it was proceeding. So I believe I had already shared the details of the university. So now if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer all your questions, please. Uh, so Anshul, we have a couple of questions in uh, the chat box, even I was answering one after another. So the first question was already answered. Uh, the second is US approves a record number of uh, student this year. What about other countries student? Now that can't be uh, uh, so answered. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so oh. actually that was the news specifically for uh, the Indian market only because that was uh, Mission India. So that was news only for India. But if we talk about the other countries, so there were certain number of countries who uh, where there were, there were the lockdowns. In Africa, again, there was good response, but not that much as compared to India. Uh, as same goes for Philippines, Vietnam and Indonesia. And if we talk about the Latin America, so again, the response from the Latin America was quite good. Not And uh, if we talk about Sri Lanka, not that much good. So this is the current scenario for all the countries. Uh, yeah, thank I hope you. I, ha I have answered the question. Any, uh, any other questions? Um, yeah, so... Uh, Joseph has asked, is it possible to have the slides sent to the agents for reference purposes? Uh, yes, you may get the presentation. Yes. 
uh, um, even though we can show you uh, the powerpoint presentation we are having a program matrix and some of the inputs whereby you can just you know share it with the students or wherever you want to promote it so we'll be happy to share all the details whatever we have of the university okay so there is a students so the answer is yes i do understand that you know the nigeria comes under english speaking country but when it comes to MSCUB, then yes, we do require IELTS. But as uh, Arhant had already mentioned that we accept applications without IELTS also with um, IELP program, that is English language extensive program uh, or English is the second language. So we can still accept the applications, but the student have to go for ESL with the main subject. And also there is one condition for that English program, language program. So once the student receives his or her visa, so now the student is there in the university. So university conducts one, you know, test that is a, a free, a free English language test for all the international students who haven't gone for their IELTS or any any TOEFL or PT or Duolingo. So if the student clears that English language test, so the student do not have to study English. The student will directly study the main subject. But if not, then in that case, the student have to, you know, uh, study English with the main subject. Hope I have answered this question. Okay, how about uh, there is some other question. Uh, can we get application fee waiver for the students? So unfortunately, no, being a public, uh, I mean, public university, being a state university, um, unfortunately, no, at this particular point. How about the cost of living? Does university provide student accommodation facilities, please? So yes, we are having a very good housing facilities, which we are providing to the international students. And the costing for the housing starts from 7,000 to $7,500. Uh, this costing is basically for double sharing room, but uh, ultimately we have single sharing, single sharing room, uh, double sharing, triple sharing. Depends on the student that you know which accommodation he or she want to prefer. Apart from this, we are having one particular you know a com a community within the university that is BFF community, which provides or uh, which provide assistance to all the international students who want to stay off campus. So we are having both the options with on campus and uh, off campus. But for undergrads, it is mandatory to stay on campus for at least one year. And for the masters, it is not mandatory. They can stay anywhere they want to stay. So I hope I have answered this question too. So there is a next question. What is the fee of IELP program and the duration? So the fee for IELP program is to, it starts from $2,000 to $2,500, depending. And uh, in terms of the completion of the program, totally depends upon a student that he may completes within a one month, within two months, within three months, totally depends upon a student because it's just the English language program. So I hope I have answered this question too. Any, any other questions? Okay, um, so yes, we do provide the visa assistance to, uh, to the international students. So how it is like, uh, once a student uh, receives his or her I-20 uh, with the university, so after that, what we do is what the assistance which we provide is we communicate with the, with the students. As we all know that US is a purely interview-based visa. So we conduct the sessions with the international teams of the students and thereby we generally communicate with the students. We guide them what uh, what questions basically the embassy officer accept, expects from the, uh, uh, from the international, uh, from students. So this is the assistance which we provide to all our international students. Hope I have answered this question too. Any other questions? Okay, um, there is one. Uh, in the course of visa refusal, what happens? So in, in a course of visa refusals, the student can reapply uh, again for, uh, for, the, uh, for, um, 
for uh, for a new uh, interview i mean within one particular intake student can apply approximately for three to five times for the embassy interview or in case if he or she doesn't want to continue he or she can you know defer for the next intake so this is this is about the visa refusals any any other questions anshu there was one question which i probably yeah. missed before it was what is the initial deposit to be paid for getting i20 okay so there is no initial deposit for to which is to be paid to get the i20 there is just an application for a fee that is 30 usd for uh, undergrads and 40 usd for the masters that's it there is no deposits thanks thanks uh... i believe uh, all the questions have been answered up till now any more questions are welcome Uh, yes, I believe. Uh, please send slide. Yes, we will definitely share the slides. Okay, so for um, the thirty-five or forty-five, so if the student wants to apply online, then the application fees are thirty-five for UG and forty-five for PG. But if the student uh, want to apply offline, I mean there is the application form. Then it is thirty for undergrads and forty forty for PG. And we generally prefer, you know, going for offline mode only. so we can share you the application form and the admission kit uh, for your further reference yes if there are uh, any other more questions so the questions are most welcome so i believe that these are the set of the questions um oh uh, okay so well there is no interview for the admissions Uh, I think you have answered all the question. Uh, thank you for your time and your presentation. And um, I wish you a very nice day. Thank you so much for arranging this tra uh, training session um, for your team. And we are just hoping that we can get some good numbers for this upcoming intake for MSUB. And in case if you need any kind of assistance, I believe you have a contact number of Arhan. You can I'll share my number also and uh, my email ID also. So you can you know just call me up. You can call us. You can email us. So I, we will be happy to assist all your questions and all your queries. So I'm just okay. sharing my details in the chat box. So my name is Anshul Sharma, and here's here are my details and the contact uh, my contact details and my email ID.
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Have a nice day, bye. Okay, bye-bye, thank you, bye-bye, take care.